Hello and welcome to The Lucky Roll, an eclectic channel for eclectic games. And today we're looking at Atmosphere, or as it was known outside of Europe, Nightmare, the video board game. Atmosphere was a board game that was released in 1991 by Spears Games and designed by Philip Tanner and Brett Clements. It's a game for three to six players that lasted just over an hour and by Christmas of 1993 had sold its two millionth copy. Now what made Atmosphere, or Nightmare, such a roaring success was the fact that it was a video board game. Not a board game based on a video game, but a board game that was played with a VHS cassette tape in which the protagonist directly challenged, taunted and punished the players as they played the game. So, you want to play the game? My game, by my rules, I am the gatekeeper. I rule this game, and you, you will obey my rules. It was a concept that was never done before with board games, and proved to be a major commercial success as Atmosphere spawned three add-ons, a sequel, which dropped the nightmare part of the franchise name to be known worldwide as Atmosphere Harbinger, which in turn had two subsequent booster packs, and re-releases of the game in DVD in 2004, 2006 and 2019 with Atmosphere Soul Rangers, Gatekeeper and Kofu the Mummy, all of whom featured a different protagonist that tried to terrify you as you played the game. Lucky Roll is the home of the best board game reviews, news, competitions and discussions. We cover everything from the game of life to Gloomhaven, so don't miss out. Subscribe now to join the fun. The genius behind this new style of game was a company known as a Couple of Cowboys, an Australian television production company established in 1983 by Philip Tanner and Brett Clements. Both were reporters who met in 1982 at a television show called Simon Townsend, Wonder World. After founding a couple of cowboys, they soon produced their own TV series called Just For The Record and from there produced the first copy of Atmosphere for the Australian market in 1991, which went on to worldwide success. Brett Clements wrote and directed the game whilst Philip Tanner produced it and the TV credentials and background of the game designers is undoubtedly what inspired the concept of this game and it shows. Is it next? Who is just about to roll the dice? Answer me! Time's up. If you fail to answer yes, my gatekeeper in time, you must roll a six before you can play again. The casting of one of who knows as the gatekeeper combined with the impressive makeup and sound effects of the time, turned what could have easily been a stale board game concept into a fun and silly hour of ludicrous frights that was the highlight of many a slumber party and drunken Halloween night to come for many a player. It's a game that blew my mind as a child as the TV commercial had lightning flash through the board towards the players and the gatekeeper screaming at you as the wind blew through the kitchen of the players reminiscent of the poltergeist movies or the library scene from Ghostbusters. It was an ad that was fast and furious a novel concept meant that everyone who saw it wanted to play this game be they kids or adults. The aim of the game is simple. Players must collect six keys in order to unlock the center of the board and escape. If no player manages to escape within the 60 minute duration of the VHS cassette, the gatekeeper, which taunts and challenges the players, wins. It's a roll and move game that works only because the gatekeeper, played by Wanatu Nosel, is so entertaining and cheesy. The gatekeeper will frequently interrupt the gameplay by addressing players and issuing ludicrous challenges to them. 
So unless a player is given a specific name, the gatekeeper is usually addressing the player who is either currently holding the dice or was the last person to touch it. Among the challenges issued is rolling certain numbers, choosing other players for punishment, frightening fellow players at certain times for extra turns, and a ridiculous staring competition that is always funny to watch. If a player accomplishes the challenge, they get a key. If they get six keys, they must race to the center of the board and reveal the top nightmare card. As part of the game set, players must write their own personal nightmare down and shuffle them into the center deck. And as long as the player doesn't draw their own nightmare, they stop the VHS cassette and win the game. Is anybody wasting away in the black hole? I offer you a chance. A toss of the coin. Tails, and you are free. But heads. <laughs> and yours is still mine. Whilst the game mechanic is predominantly roll and move, I think a better name for it would be troll and move, as the game goes out of its way to make fun of the player and engage in numerous time-wasting and silly mechanics as part of the frantic gameplay. The taunts from the gatekeeper are fun and memorable, and gameplay is done generally at a very brisk pace as players speed through their turn in order not to be the one challenged or taunted when the gatekeeper arrives and asks who is holding the dice now. There are two sets of cards in the game, Fate and Time cards, and to be honest, they strike me as just busy work there to occupy the player, as their value as aids to the player are at best questionable at times. If the player draws Fate cards, they often get half of a key. If a player collects two halves of a key, they then collect for free one of their six keys. However, whilst there are innumerable cards with the handle of the key, there is only one card with the actual lock part so players can collect innumerable versions of the same key half with no joy as the other half is so rarely attained. The time cards are also a tease as the clock is very easy to lose track of and after a while you build up a massive collection of them which makes their effective management even harder. If you're enjoying this video please like, share and subscribe and of course we want to hear from you. Post a comment, pose a question, get involved. The board itself is littered with broken tombstones that serve as the spaces on the board, many of which have obscure writing that is deliberately awkward to read, that force players to cooperate or move to see what is actually written on the game space that their piece is standing on. But to me, this is the fun of the game, the sheer silliness and awkwardness of it. Whilst the horror effects and the sinister aspect of the gatekeeper is done well, it's never actually frightening. And this is a game that could easily be played with children, as the horror verges more towards comedy and cheesiness rather than actually trying to frighten you. The VHS tape never changes, and if you play the game more than once, its fun factor diminishes drastically, as it becomes easy to anticipate the gatekeeper's next challenge and next taunt. Subsequent plays also highlight the weakness of the core mechanics of the game, where it can be stupidly hard to assemble the needed keys as so many of the cards drawn from the Fate and Time decks are ultimately useless. And the trolling part of the game becomes less funny when you don't have the gatekeeper able to distract you as much because you've seen it all before. It's a great, no pun intended to the gatekeeper, gateway game for new players to the hobby as the time scale of just an hour is brisk the game is consistently engaging and very simple to play as the bulk of the mechanics are roll and move and the time fate cards are ultimately irrelevant once the pace of the game is established and players are too busy having fun to really care about the uh, particulars of the game itself. Do you know that we run regular competitions here on the Lucky Roll where you could win a board game for just being a subscriber to the channel? It's free to enter so subscribe now to be in with a chance to win. The expansions to the game breathe much needed life into the core game itself as it introduces new characters and fresh sets of time and fate cards whilst using the same board. In Atmosphere 2, the player antagonist is Baron Samdi, the clown zombie. This was released in 1992 and took the game in a much more 
party type direction with the antagonist getting players to chant and sing sequences in order to succeed at the challenge. Welcome back, kid. Welcome back to the game. My game. Call me Two-Faced. Call me anytime. Call me Baron Samdi. Scope this. Check it out, children. Talent. Raw talent. And baby, believe me, rock and roll is good for the soul. Except I ain't got one. Now, how's that for an opener from a good-looking corpse? At the height of its success, there was sponsoring deals for the franchise with Pepsi and an actual music video. Plans had been discussed for a movie based upon the characters, but ultimately were shelved so that they could concentrate on the reboot of the genre with the game Atmosphere Harbingers, which we hope to review at another time. It's a game that is a novelty to own and great fun to play once a year on Halloween night. Playing the game with any more frequency than that, however, takes the shine off it and risks you not wanting to play it again. The first two antagonists, the Gatekeeper and the Zombie, are the most fun. However, the last two expansions, by trying to take the game in a more serious direction, expose its inherent design flaws, as the substance isn't there in the mechanics to accommodate the change in tone. And it's a pity, as the actress Frederique Fouche does quite an admirable job with the second expansion. One final thing I'd like to mention is that a couple of cowboys have released a rebooted version of the game in 2019 that works with an app. At the moment it is only available unfortunately in Australia and Spain, Portugal. However, when it does reach worldwide release, it's one I intend to review and compare with this video to see how far the genre has developed and what changes have been brought. So until next time, this is Sean from The Lucky Roll. If you enjoyed this video, please like, subscribe, all that good YouTube stuff. And until next time, good luck and God bless.